so here's the breakdown for the Frozen Dream song. Um, unlike Colors of Infinity, this is more dealing with different, you know, it's more in the prog rock, prog metal vein, I guess. And it's not the same kind of idea as the Colors track, which was dealing with, of course, again, you know, simple chords, simple structure underneath, and, you know, being able to create something that's very simple, you know, melody-wise on guitar. This one here is a lot of different riffs and, and stuff going on, so uh, without any lead lines. The only thing, I, there's actually an arpeggiated part that goes over one rhythm, but that's, it's, it's a kind of, a, again, a different kind of thing here all together. So, um, but here we go, we're gonna just break all the stuff down. The first part, song starts with keyboards, and then uh, when the guitar breaks in, it's doing uh, a line in unison with the keyboards, and it looks like this. Notes are the eight on the fourth string, the ten on the third, sliding from the seven to the eight on the third, sliding back to the seven, again trying to smooth out the lines with the uh, you know the sliding hammer and all that stuff, and then uh, the ten on the I'm sorry the eight on the four. So so far we got. Six on the four, octave of that, which is G sharp. Uh, the ninth fret on the second string. Back to the eight on the third string. So that's what we got so far. At that point, we're going to go to the uh, the ten and the third, and bending up a half step, dropping it down, and then going to the eight. Eleven on the two. Same idea here with the bend on the ten, which is a half step down, of course. And then the uh, six on the two. Seven on the three. Half step up on the eight. To the 11 and the 2, half step bend and drop on the 10 of the 2. Try it again. drums kick in and we go into the main riff which looks like this <laughs> Uh, so it's all in the sixth string as you've seen. So it's five, seven, three, five, open, three, D. Ending with an A bar chord. Which of course is the five and the six and the seven on the, on the uh, five. Um, well, for me, I think it's always been about playing along with music rather than just playing by yourself and playing scales, which is cool. We know that, you know, it serves its purpose. You know, you're learning when you learn scales, it helps you to learn, you know, certain notes that you, you know, certain patterns that you can play within certain keys. And that's all great, as we know, and it's very important. But I think, and, and just because of the style or the way I play, which is more kind of a jam type of 
deal. I think that um, playing along with music really helps you uh, form a, a good, I don't know, just, you know, a, a feel for the music playing along with, you know, even though you're playing along with music, you're not playing along with mu musicians, at, you know, live. It still helps uh, you to shape all these important things that uh, will help you along the way, I think, and better yourself before you join a band. You know, so, and, but even after the fact, I mean, I still do that to this day. I'm still always playing along with, you know, uh, all my favorite records. You know, when I want to work on certain things like solos, I'll put on certain albums, you know, rhythm, certain albums. So, but uh, for me, I find that's it's, it's beneficial, like I said, in many ways because you just get, you know, into the groove of playing along with music that inspires you. Um, I just find it a lot more fun and beneficial. So, for the most part, but that's, you know, so, but I think I, there's a lot of other players that are like that as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It all started, I suppose, when I was very young, probably about six or seven years old when I got my first album, which was a Kiss album, Kiss Love Gun. And I think that prior to that, I, I was listening to albums from my brother and sister, older brother and sister, sorry. And uh, they were listening to the Eagles and, you know, these kind of bands, ELO, Peter Frampton, which uh, some of those bands I still like. And um, <clears throat> when I got the first Kiss album, it was the first, I guess, more raunchy kind of rock record that I had ever heard. So the guitar definitely spoke to me, and uh, I just really liked the sound of it, and I was drawn to that. Um, so that's where it kind of started. And um, my oldest brother, Brian, played guitar at the time. And uh, he always had an acoustic line around, so I just, I'd pick it up and, but I couldn't really do too much else than that. So I asked him to, you know, show me a couple of things, which he showed me like uh, Smoke on the Water the Wrong Way and um, a few other little ditties. And um, that's where it kind of started. And then I, I, I seemed to pick it up pretty quick. And uh, my parents seen this and seen that, you know, I was hungry to, to do more and wanted to do more. So they bought me uh, my own acoustic for Christmas one year. I guess I was nine. And um, I just played the crap out of it, you know, and tried to learn as much as I could, like, you know, Boston, um, little bits and pieces of, of things, you know, like I had friends in, in the small town I, I, I lived in, which was a small town outside of Montreal, Quebec. That's in Canada for you uh, U.S. people. And... Um, you know, we would all kind of trade, you know, what we knew. Like, you know, this guy knew Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin. He knew that riff. And then, you know, so we would kind of just swap. And we all tried to increase our inventory of riffs and uh, just, to, you know, try to, you know, um, just be able to play better. And um, because at that time, there was no, we didn't have YouTube or any of those kind of things. Or, uh, I mean, it was a small town. There wasn't a lot of, there wasn't any teachers there. So it was basically, we're just, you know, we had each other and that was it. So there was nobody else really to, to rely on or learn from, which a lot of kids now, I think, are very fortunate, I think, getting into guitar playing these days. There's, you go to YouTube and you can research just about anything. So it's definitely um, a really cool thing. Although I'm very glad I grew up in that time, though, because I think just the, the, the musical climate and the bands I grew up with are, uh, have become very special. So I think um, for those reasons, I'm glad I started when I did. But anyway, um, basically, again, just, just, you know, expanding as much as we could. And uh, then I got into Black Sabbath in, um, in my early teens, I guess. And um, I got my first electric guitar. And um, you know, I learned how to play some bar chords, and 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 somebody had showed me how to play the beginning of Paranoid or something. And then I, I just became obsessed with Black Sabbath, so I got all the records, you know, and and uh, <clears throat> and um, it's like, wow, that bar chord or that thing kind of sounds like that. And I started to put the pieces of the puzzle together, and you know, oh, this kind of sounds similar to this, like Sweet Leaf, is okay, you know, and just and then I was able to. That was the beginnings of lifting music, as we call it by just, you know, learning by ear without any visuals. And um, and that was a big part of of my playing, really, was developing an ear for lifting music. Of course, over time, you get better. 
but the initial those initial years were a lot of fun as well um, just learning all those songs just picking them up and being able to try to play along with some of my favorite albums by Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and just play along with them um, just sitting down and play with them you know that was for me that was a lot of fun it wasn't uh, a thing I thought I, I, I needed to do or should do I just I wanted to do it and that's really where a lot of these I think a lot of the uh, the good stuff comes from with guitar playing is that you know you have that motivation and being inspired you want to do this kind of thing so I just went to town and just tried to learn everything I could so that's pretty much and I think I, I'm still kind of like that to this day where I you know I still like to sit down and play along with music rather than just you know I mean I like to play by myself sometimes it's cool but I grew up with that kind of thing so and I think that's why I probably developed this, the type of approach and style that I have which is more ad lib and jam type of thing I used to see guys do this too where they would play along with music recorded pre-recorded music and not just necessarily playing what was you know playing the song but they would play like little solo pieces and you know play over it and, and adapt to the key changes and all these things so that was a really big inspiration for me as well and I've just done that ever since you know a long time ago and I still do that to this day where I just again just continue to you know, play the stuff that inspires me, and and I like to play. It, for me, it's fun. It's therapeutic. It's it's a fun thing, and it it, it keeps you fresh. I think you know, and, and and you're always incorporating new ideas because along the way, when you play, there's going to be things where, you know, you're going to learn certain like for say solos, you're going to learn certain little things that will become a part of your playing. Some things won't, you know. Some things stick with you, and 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 I think you evolve as well. So, but. Um, but I would, you know, try to learn everything that would inspire me and, and sound interesting at the time. So, uh, and again, I still do that, so. Mm -hmm. 